Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai. Today we are going to study the third part of energy sources in surgery series and we are going to discuss the principles of using QSA. What is QSA? It is Cavitron Ultrasonic Surgical Aspirator routinely used in liver surgeries and neurosurgeries. The principle of QSA is tricky and what I have tried here is use some examples to simplify the concept. In this presentation, after seeing the principle, we will also look at the important terms that you need to understand to use QSA, which include cavitation, fragmentation, irrigation and suction. So these are the terms that you will see people use when they are using QSA in OT. Okay. Other thing we are going to see is routine parts of the probe and advantages and disadvantages of using QSA. So a fairly simple presentation, but some concepts involved. So let us see them one by one. So as you saw the name, there is cavitation, there is ultrasound, and there is suction and aspiration. So first of all, let us see what is ultrasound and the different frequencies at which the ultrasound is used in medicine. So when we talk of frequencies, the audible frequencies are between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So that is the audible range or the range that we can hear. Below that is infrasound, above that is ultrasound. So anything above 20,000 hertz is ultrasound. QSA usually uses the frequencies between 20,000 and 40,000 hertz. So that is the frequency that we use in surgery. And what we call as ultrasound in imaging uses very high frequencies in terms of 1.5 megahertz to 20 megahertz. So this slide has a lot of MCQs as well as a lot of important values that you need to remember to understand these equipments. Now, before understanding QSA, if a lot of you are not aware of why we are discussing water here, QSA has a channel which continuously irrigates the field, right, which is with water. So, the entire principle on which cavitation or QSA works is based on the boiling point of water. What we have to understand is that the standard boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at room temperature and atmospheric pressure. And we know the mechanism of pressure cooker, right? What it does is it increases the pressure on the water so that the boiling point increases, which allows cooking. Similarly, on the other side, when you reduce the pressure, the boiling point of water also reduces, as you can see in this graph. When the pressure is zero, the boiling point is nearly only 20 degrees Celsius. So instead of 100 degrees Celsius, the water will convert into vapor and steam at only 20 degrees Celsius. Now, when the water is in low pressure and it boils so much, it reduces to bubbles and then vaporizes. What that leads to is that the bubbles burst. Now, this essentially is the concept of cavitation. What is cavitation? So the rapidly oscillating tip of the QSA converts the ultrasonic energy to mechanical energy by its rapid oscillations. And what these oscillations do is it creates a zone of low pressure between the cells and the tip. Okay. So now when the cells have high water content, such as the normal hepatocytes, what will happen? Because of creation of a low pressure zone, something like zero, the water starts boiling early, right? So in due to this rapid oscillation, where the ultrasonic energy is converted into mechanical energy, the low pressure zone between the tip of the QSA probe and tissue with high water content and low elastic tissue is created. What this causes, this causes the water to boil, right? And then vaporize. So wherever the QSA probe gets in touch with the tissue with low elastic uh, content and high water content, the low pressure zone causes the water to boil and then vaporize, which causes the bubbles to burst. And this causes the cells to rupture. This is basically the principle of cavitation, right? Listen to this two, three times. Try to imagine a pressure cooker 
and then the discussion that we have done here with the graph and I am sure that you will understand what is the meaning of cavitation. Okay, this principle is also used in submarines. Okay, the principle of cavitation because wherever the water converts into vapors and bursts, it produces noise. Submarines try to have less noise, so they avoid cavitation by using some modifications in the rotors behind the submarine. Right, so cavitation is a concept that is used in a lot of places. What I have tried here is to give you a very simplified explanation that what we are doing is by creating a low pressure zone, we are reducing the boiling point of water. So the water boils at room temperature without heating the water and the vaporization causes the bubbles to burst and the tissue cells to rupture. So this selectively ablates the tissue with high water content. And there is a layer by layer surgical excision without affecting the vital tissues in vicinity, right? So why is it used in liver? Because hepatocytes are surrounded by a lot of structures such as blood vessels, nerves, and biliary ducts, which are high in collagen and elastin and low in water content. And therefore, these structures are not damaged by QSA. So it is routinely used in liver parenchymal transaction. Other important terms are fragmentation, which occurs due to rapidly oscillating tip as a mechanical effect. So impact of the tip with the tissue makes them vibrate and fragment from the surrounding non-affected tissue. And this causes the fragmented tissue to be suctioned and aspirated by the aspirator, right? So there is continuous irrigation from the QSA pope through the irrigation channel, which creates an emulsion with the fragmented tissue. And the suction is through another portal to clear the operative field. So whenever you want to understand QSA or you want to describe QSA, these four terms are very important. Okay, I hope you have understood the concepts now. So as we have already seen, now this is very easy. There is an irrigation channel which continuously irrigates the probe so that the tissue is cleared and you get a clean operative field. There is an aspiration channel which is connected to the suction and this aspiration channel helps in aspirating the emulsion that is created by irrigation, fragmentation and cavitation. The surgical tip that you can see here, this is the tip that keeps oscillating. Okay, It keeps oscillating at high frequencies and that is what creates the low pressure zone and the creation of cavitation, right? So these are basically the components of QSA probe. Your OT staff needs to be trained to handle this machine so as you, so that the machine is used properly. So when we can label the parts of QSA, the transducer converts the electromagnetic energy into mechanical vibrations of the tip. The connecting body mechanically conveys the motions of transducer to the surgical tip. The surgical tip amplifies the motion and also contacts the tissue and damages it by fragmentation. A very important point is that the direction at which you apply the tip also affects the effect that it will have on the tissue. What that means is if the tip is perpendicular to the tissue, then it causes a cavitation effect. And if it is angled, then it causes a hemostatic effect. So if you apply the tip to the tissue at an angle of say 45 degree and press the tissue by the horizontal side of the tip, then it will have a hemostatic effect. Whereas if you apply the tip to the tissue end on, then it will have a cavitation and cutting effect. So this directional use of QSA is important to understand. Now, there are a lot of frequencies that are used in QSA with the new machines. But two very standard frequencies that used to be used before include 23 kilohertz and 36 kilohertz. 23 kilohertz is more powerful and has a broader and deeper tissue effect, whereas 36 kilohertz is used in soft tissue areas as it is less powerful, but has more precision with tactile feedback and fine control. So used routinely in areas with sensitive structures. So this basically gives you an overview of uh, how a QSA is used 
एडवांटेजेस ऑफ क्यूसा बिकॉज ऑफ द सिलेक्टिवनेस ऑफ टिश्यू डिविजन एंड फ्रेगमेंटेशन दैट कैन बी डन विथ क्यूसा इट गिव्स अ कंट्रोल डिसेक्शन एंड बेटर विजिबिलिटी सेट देर इज रिडक्शन इन एसेंशियल टिश्यू इंजरी बिकॉज क्यूसा सिलेक्टिवली डेमेज इज ओनली द टिश्यू विच एज हाई वॉटर कंटेंट सो इफ वी यूज इट विथ नॉलेज एंड अवेरनेस ऑफ द मिकेनिजम ऑफ एक्शन देन देर इज रिडक्शन इन एसेंशियल टिश्यू इंजरी एंड लेस ब्लीडिंग so like i said it has found its use in liver surgery neuro surgery as well as a lot of other areas we are not going to go into details of where it is used but this video will definitely help you in understanding how qsa works and with this understanding you can use it in a better way so in upcoming energy sources video we will study some more fascinating energy sources that we use in surgery thank you